What's up you guys? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new, welcome. My name is Devin and I hope that you will consider sticking around and subscribing. And if you're not new, as always, welcome back. You know I love you. All right, so I have not done a video like this in a while, but we are going to do a monthly favorites video. So it is the first week of April when I'm filming this. This is going to be a March favorites video, but hopefully I can get this edited and up before we are too far into April. But I've been getting back into the swing of filming in the past couple of months and I do have some things that I have been loving. There's not just makeup here. We also, we definitely have makeup, but we also have some books, a body spray, some nail polish. And we also do have some fails as well of things that just I've tried and just have not worked out for me. So if that is interesting to you, then let's get right into it. Okay, let's start with makeup because makeup is definitely the bulk of this video and this is a makeup channel. So let's start there. First, I'm gonna talk about this Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Foundation. So this is a product that I really have gone back and forth on in terms of my opinion on it and whether or not I really love it. But as you can see, this one has been used up significantly. So, you know, that means I like it. So I have it in two shades. I have the shade four neutral and seven neutral. I've been using this four neutral one a lot because you know, it's been winter. The weather here in Pennsylvania has been absolutely crappy and I haven't been motivated to keep up with my self tan very much. Here's my thing about this foundation. So I bought it when we still live in Tampa. My thing with it in Tampa that made me unsure about whether or not I liked it was that I didn't feel like it was super long lasting. I also did feel like it did get pretty shiny on me throughout the day. So I was a little unsure about this foundation at first just because I felt like it was a little finicky, but then we moved back to Pennsylvania and my skin completely changed like basically overnight. It's colder up here, the air is drier up here and that does affect your skin. So when we moved back and I noticed that change in my skin, I found myself wanting to go back to my more hydrating, healthy glow makeup products as opposed to the more mattifying things that I was gravitating towards when I lived in Florida and it was you know, hot and humid most of the year. So this, especially in the past, month, month and a half, this has been my go-to every day. So I just wanted to share that. I thought it was interesting how I really noticed a difference in the way that the same product performed in different climates. If you need a foundation that's going to last you like from the morning through the work day and then also out at night or something like that through happy hour, you don't know that this is your girl, but in terms of just an everyday kind of thing, I really like it. Okay, so I actually probably should have started with this first because it's a primer and it's kind of in the combination of these two things that I feel like has been bringing my skin back to life a little bit as I've been feeling super dry. I have talked about this literally for years on my channel um, and I've been talking about it a lot in recent videos too. So if I sound like a broken record, I'm sorry. I'll try not to, you know, embellish too much on it here in this video, but this is the Too Faced Hangover Primer. It's very basic. It is not a gripping primer. It's not a smoothing primer. It's not really gonna do anything like that. So really it's just, it's very nourishing. It's very hydrating. And like, even after I do my morning skincare routine, I've been finding that when I go to do my makeup, I feel like my skin has like sucked up all the moisture. So then when I go to do my makeup a little bit later, I feel like I need hydration again. So this has been that for me. It's really been like a, second moisturizer and a makeup primer and all that stuff all in one. So if you want something that's just very no fuss, basic, but still hydrating and good under makeup, I would definitely recommend this. This is like not just a monthly favorite. This is like a life favorite. <laughs> okay, super random and super like probably not exciting, <laughs> but this is the CoverGirl Lash Blast Clean Waterproof Mascara. My thing with mascaras that I have started to notice is that, so my eyelashes grow straight out. There's no natural curl to them at all. So I have to curl them. And really what I do is I curl my eyelashes and then immediately go in with mascara to try to get it to hold as much of the curl as possible because otherwise they start to fall. And what I notice with a lot of mascaras is that they are too heavy on my eyelashes. So even if my lashes are holding the curl from the lash curler, I notice after like 10, 15, 20 minutes, 
the mascara, if it's too heavy on my eyelashes, just starts to make my eyelashes like droop down. And then I just like don't get the full effect of the mascara that I want. Obviously I want my eyelashes to look long and voluminous and open and with a lot of mascaras, it's kind of hard. So this one has been something that I've repurchased and used over and over again. But as I started to notice that, I noticed that this one did not do that. So when I curl my eyelashes and apply this right after, not only does it give me pretty good volume and, and length, my eyelashes also stay curled, which leads me to believe that this is not too heavy on my eyelashes either. So overall, I just think this is a really nice formula. It really works for me. And mascara is something that like, I feel like a lot of people are picky about and for good reason, like so am I. So I've really been paying attention to that recently. And this one has just proved time and time again to work for me. Okay, so at the end of last year, Sigma released a collection with Disney Beauty and the Beast. And that is my all time favorite movie. So I know a lot of this collection is sold out on their website. Like I know the palette is, I'm not sure if this blush one is, but this is the blush palette. And as you can see, it is not clean and pristine anymore. I have used the absolute heck out of it. This here, there used to be a very beautiful imprint of Lumiere there in the center. I have used the absolute heck out of Lumiere. So for the past three years, Sigma has done a Disney collection as like their fall kind of like right before holiday release. And I am here for it, but I never, I didn't get anything. I think I got the lip products from the Cinderella collection and I didn't get anything from the Alice in Wonderland collection. And I definitely regret it because those are like collectible items for me as somebody who grew up on Disney and just like loves especially the princesses. But when they announced this, it was an immediate yes, I bought the entire collection on launch day. So I have the whole thing and have been loving the whole thing. But there's just been something special about this blush palette. These are like my exact favorite blush tones and even the highlighter like a champagne gold highlight and a warm pinky rosy blush and then more of like a, you know, terracotta neutral warm blush love it. So I've been using the heck out of this. If you can still get it, I would recommend. All right, let's talk about another life favorite for a second. It is the ColourPop Super Shock Cheek from ColourPop. <laughs> what? <laughs> I meant to say it is the Lunch Money Super Shock Cheek Highlighter from ColourPop. Anyway, it's one of their Super Shocks. This is an OG product, not this specific one, but the first time I tried this highlighter from ColourPop was one of the first things I ever bought from them. As you can see, I hit pan very much so. I use the absolute heck out of this. I have it on my face today, so I used it in this makeup look. I did film this. I think I'm gonna post this favorites video first and then film the ColourPop video that I filmed with this, so keep an eye out for that. But I just wanted to mention this since I was doing a favorites video because again, this is not just a monthly favorite. This is a life favorite. It's just so foolproof. Like this kind of formula, you just grab it on your finger. I don't even have a mirror. I'm just looking in the monitor and just pop it on your cheekbone. It goes so beautifully over top of powders and creams. It lasts, it gives a beautiful highlight without looking too chunky or glittery. And like I said, you can just slap it on with your fingers and go. It doesn't need to be like set properly or anything like that. It really just stands alone and it's ColourPop, so it's affordable. So this is a home run product for me and this specific shade Lunch Money is just it works really well for me. It works when I have a tan. It works when I don't have a tan. Definitely give this a try if you haven't already. Okay, next we have a product that is newer to me, but I've been using the heck out of it since I got it. This is the Juvia's Place Blush Lighter in the shade Soft Tulip Glow. I tried this for the first time in my Ulta, like trying new makeup from Ulta video. So I just recently posted that, but nonetheless, I wanted to mention this because I have used this a whole bunch since trying it for the first time and it is gorgeous. When I've just been doing my everyday makeup, like just doing my base and then popping on some mascara and a lip and going, this has been the blush that has been, or the liquid blush that has been in my routine. Um, and sometimes I top it with a powder blush and sometimes honestly I don't. The only thing that I will say is that because it is luminous like that, you do, when you set it down with a powder, you do lose a little bit of that luminosity. So you do have to bring that back 
with a powder blush with luminosity if you want that but in terms of the color that it goes on onto the cheeks and the way it stays it does hold its own under translucent powder and i've just been loving it i feel like it just helps me even sculpt my cheeks a little further after my contour it just it looks so pretty i feel like when i use this specifically like my cheekbones just look like you know, been loving this. Next up, I have this Huda Beauty powder. So this is her Easy Bake powder in the shade Pound Cake. I talked about this semi-recently in one of my Sephora videos. I heard the hype around this for so long, but I had never tried it. And I heard so many people singing its praises from social media people to other people, like there's people I knew in life to makeup artists, so many makeup artists that I know keep this in their kit. So when I got a bunch of Sephora gift cards over the holidays, this was on my list of things that I wanted to try. It did not disappoint. It is so smoothing. It is not cakey at all. It really does set your makeup down completely, like I said, without looking too heavy or cakey. I will say it is mattifying. Just keep that in mind. If you live in a drier climate or if your skin is drier, this might be a little too much for your skin. Again, not because it's too heavy, but because I do think it is very smoothing and mattifying. It's a baking powder. It is meant to do all of the above that I just said. Oh, the only thing, the only thing about this, all the names are like pound cake, cupcake, things like that. So if it was gonna be heavily fragranced, right? Which we don't love in general, but if it was going to be, you would expect it to be like vanilla or birthday cakey based on the names. No, it smells like your grandma's perfume. It smells straight up like an old lady. It is very jarring the first time you try it, if you're not expecting it, it's very perfumey. I don't find that it irritates my skin or makes my skin itchy or anything at all, but you can smell it. And that is the only thing that takes away from this for me. Every time I use it, I'm like, oh goodness, I just wish it did not smell like that. That's my only gripe with this, but in terms of the way it performs in my makeup routine, I've really been liking it. All right, last two makeup favorites. I have a high-end lipstick and a affordable lipstick. So let's start with the affordable one first, this e.l.f. one. So this is the e.l.f. There was a name for this collection. I can't remember what it was called, but this is in the shade No Doubt. It's a semi-recent release from e.l.f., probably not that recent at this point, but it's just a kind of classic bullet lipstick. I really am just obsessed with this color and the formula. I used to have a lipstick from Milani that was in black packaging like this and it was a matte formula and they don't make it anymore as far as I know, but it was my absolute go-to. Like how often do you normally go through a lipstick like this? I went through that lipstick because it was my go-to whenever Sean and I were going on a date, whenever we were going out to the bar, whenever I was going to church, like whenever I was going Going anywhere and I could not be bothered to figure out what lipstick I wanted to wear I just grabbed that one and I was so sad when it was discontinued this has become that for me that's my point in that whole spiel formula is great it's elf so you know it's not gonna break the bank and um, I've really been liking it actually do you guys really quick before we go I'll just show you a swatch of it on my hand just so you can get an idea of the color. So if you are somebody that likes a beige, kind of more brown leading nude versus a more pink leaning nude, and you want something that's not too light, not too dark, a good medium, mid-toned, warm nude, can't go wrong with this. Okay, and then lastly, for my high-end lipstick, I actually have two of these and I'm looking at the other one sitting over on my desk because I used it recently. So these are the Satin Allure lipsticks from Pat McGrath. This is the shade Nude Venus. And can we just take a moment for this packaging? I saw, I think around the holidays, saw Kathleen Lights talking about these because I think maybe they were a new release. I'm not sure. I saw her talking about this specific one, this nude Venus color in a video. And I was like, I don't think I've ever bought a lipstick so quickly after seeing a video <laughs> before. I just felt like it looked like that absolutely perfect nude. But I ended up buying this one and then another shade, which is like slightly darker. Should I just grab it? Let me just go grab it. Hold on. So this is the other one. This one is called Negligee and this one is just slightly darker. So these ones on the flip side, you can tell are more of like your pink leaning nude. I actually would love to put both of these in my bridal kit if I didn't already have so many freaking lipsticks in my bridal kit already. 
but yeah they're just gorgeous and you can see they have a nice sheen to them i just want to keep them out on display for decoration because it's just so so cute it reminds me of marie from the aristocats if you have ever seen that movie and actually that segues really nicely into my next favorites because i'm gonna show you some nail polishes from lights lacquer and guess what this color is called marie Marie, my darling. So just like this little combo, such a vibe. Okay, so I wanted to talk about these two nail polishes for a second. So I'll just honestly talk about Lights Lacquer nail polishes in general. I have been doing my own nails a lot recently and I've actually been doing them with like clear press-ons and then painting them with my Lights Lacquer nail polishes. That's what I really love to do when I'm in that DIY mood because I do love to go to the nail salon. I also do sometimes just love to do it on my own. But these two colors specifically, I wore a bunch in March. This is the shade Marie. I was wearing this, I think, in my Ulta video recently. And then before that, I actually was wearing this color, and this is the color Dear Diary, which is a really beautiful purple. So my favorite formula from Lights Lacquer is actually this more, I think it's called her jelly formula. I just think it's the most long lasting. You can really build them up. And then I'm also actually wearing another one of the her colors on my nails today. This is the shade Delilah. This is also one of the jelly formulas. So it's been pretty chip resistant this is day three and they don't look fresh I don't think by any means but they still look pretty good and this is three coats on my natural nails I just couldn't be bothered to do the whole thing with the press-ons or the glue-ons really if you have not tried out her nail polishes I highly highly recommend there is something on her website for everyone and I just think they are really really high quality I'm not gonna say that they don't chip at all because nail polish chips it's not magic but I do find that her nail polishes chip less than OPI and Essie so definitely worth checking out okay so let's talk about my not so favorites in the beauty category and then we will finish on a high notes with the books that I've read in the past month that I loved. So this may come as a shock because I know a lot of you out there love this product and this product got so much hype last summer. I cannot, I cannot, I cannot with this. I never even saw Twilight and I feel like this makes my skin look like the vampires in that movie where it was like sparkling like diamonds or whatever. You can tell here, like look at the side of that bottle. You can see the pearlized finish in there. I don't know. I, I, I recently used this in a tutorial where I was doing like glowy spring and summer makeup because I wanted to give it one last stitch effort. I went throughout that entire rest of that day just feeling like my makeup looked good but something was off about my face. Like something just didn't look right. If you have any bit of pores or textures showing on your skin, like if your pores are any kind of large like mine are, or if you have any kind of just texture on your skin, this is going to emphasize the heck out of it and just make it look like it's reflecting light. So if you have really nice skin, you don't have large pores, you don't maybe have to wear a lot of makeup. That's who I see this working for. That's who I feel like was probably obsessed with this when this was going viral, but it just does not, I can't make it work. I can't. And I'm disappointed because I wanted to like it as much as everybody else did, but I just don't. So that unfortunately is going in the do not use ever again bin. Okay. Something that is a more recent item, for lack of a better term. This is something else that I tried out in my recent Ulta video. Come on, focus. This is the Essence Lash Without Limits Mascara. Claims to be extreme lengthening and volume. It's got a silicone brush. I had recently seen this in a lot of drugstore videos, and I feel like I saw people liking it. The problem is it goes on really nicely, but my problem with this is two things. One, doesn't hold the curl. It makes my eyelashes fall. And then the other thing, I've noticed this actually with more than one Essence mascara. They go on really nice, and a lot of them look really nice, but they flake so badly. And that was another thing with this was just like after not even wearing it that long, like after wearing it a couple hours, it flaked so badly. 
and I just was getting like who wants little black flakes all in your under eyes making your under eyes look dark when we're all trying to brighten that area you know so didn't break the bank on this I think this was four or five bucks so I'm not that heartbroken about it but just because everybody else loves it doesn't mean that it's good because I <sighs> I just didn't like it. I know they have a lash primer that's popular. Maybe it would be worth a try with a lash primer, but I mean, you know, you want something to work because it works. I don't know. And I did test it out for a couple days after I filmed that Ulta video and it just wasn't working for me. So it made it into the fails pile for this video. Lastly, this is something else where I have a recent video talking more in depth about why this did not work for me. So I will not harp on it too much here. But the last thing that really just did not work for me this month, the self tanner. Again, I just filmed an entire video on this with my full thought out opinions. There's a tiny little bit of this left. So I did do my best to use it several times and try to make it work and use it up even though it wasn't my favorite. In my opinion, it's not one hour express and it's not extra dark. It, it, it barely, it gave me a tiny little bit of color every single time I used it. And I even tried to double coat it one time and it still didn't work out that well. I mean, this is labeled extra dark. I wouldn't be so hard on this tan if it was not labeled extra dark one hour express, but I just did not get either of those results. Extra dark was not in the building. She was not in the room with us at all. So if you're interested and you have not seen my video on this yet, I will link that below as well. Definitely check that out if you're interested in just like my full thought out opinions. I know some people have had great success with this tan because I've seen it on social media. I also, you know, have read reviews um, on Ulta of people having the same results as me. So everybody's different. Everybody's body chemistry is different. I have other products from tanologists that I love, but this one just, uh, just didn't work for me. It was disappointing. All right, let's end on a high note and talk about something that has nothing to do with makeup, but that I just absolutely, it's another part of my life that just makes me so excited that I love so much and have always loved books. I've been seeing a lot of my favorite beauty influencers mention the books that they're reading in their favorites videos. And I love that because if there's something that is like up there with makeup in terms of how much I love it, it is books. Reading for fun has become something that has brought me so much joy in my life. And it has become part of my nightly like wind down routine as well in an effort to separate myself from my addiction to my cell phone. <laughs> I have a romance and then two thrillers. These probably look familiar to a lot of you, but let's talk about this first. Annabelle Monaghan, I believe is a fairly new author. This was her debut novel, I believe. Oh no, I got lipstick on it. No. This was just such a feel good, but I still like it wasn't, I ate it up. Like when I got past the halfway point, like I stayed up all night finishing this book because I had to see what happens. Such a good story, love the characters, such a good romance, interesting, easy to read, but also not like full of unnecessary, you know what, that happens a lot in romances. I just feel like some of the romance books that I've read from like popular authors that I've heard people recommend, I've been like, I don't need to be reading this. Like I do not need this much detail about you know what and what these people are doing. Like just give us the gist and can we move on from this scene because I'm uncomfortable. That's how I feel reading some of these books. So this to me was refreshing because it wasn't like there was none of that, but it was not like graphic or super unnecessary or uncomfortable or anything like that. It was just a great, great read. Loved it. I would recommend this. I would recommend her other book. She's coming out with a new book in June and I can't wait to read it. I love it. All right. Now these two. This one I technically read in February, but this one I read last month and I'm going to lump them together because, wow, what a story. <laughs> if you like thrillers and you have not read these, I highly, highly recommend. The characters are a little ridiculous, to be honest. Like, 
it's just you're like wow these people are insane but obviously that kind of makes the book Frida McFadden has a ton and this is an author that my sister has really gotten into and has given me a bunch of her books but I feel like these two are kind of the standout popular ones I read this in two sittings like I sat down to read this one night before bed and before I knew it I was like more than 150 pages in and the book is only like 320 something so I got almost halfway and then the next night as soon as I got into bed and started reading this I was like I know I'm gonna stay up all night and finish this and I did I read it in two sittings in 24 hours so then my sister gave me this little honey wow all I have to say is wow. I will say I feel like this one, the storyline was a little bit better than this one. I still read this one. I, you know, read this in two sittings, read this in three sittings. Um, and the only reason it took me three sittings was because, actually four, because the only reason I didn't read it in three was because I read like 200 pages at once and I was trying so hard to stay awake to finish the last like 50 pages or so. And... I just had read until I couldn't keep my eyes open anymore. So I woke up, this was last weekend. I woke up last Saturday and couldn't do anything until I finished the last 50 pages of this book. So it still had me in a grip, even though I felt like this storyline was a little bit better. This one was like the characters were, <laughs> I'm thinking of one character in particular who was like so ridiculous, but still quite a bit of twistiness at the end. I. I loved it. I really, really, really loved both of these. And she's coming out with a third in this little series here this summer as well. So I've got a lot of reading to do, my friends, but love these, love reading in general. I hope you guys like talking about books because I could talk about books almost as much as I could talk about makeup. And it's just something that brings me such a visceral joy. Like the same thing with makeup, it just gives me such such joy so that's that that's everything i've been loving this month wait a second i've been staring at this the whole time and i totally forgot to mention it i have absolutely been loving this this is the sol de janeiro 62 thing i don't know this has been popular for a long time it's something that i am late to but i really have not worn perfume like i used to wear perfume every single day to work there was this juicy couture one that i was absolutely obsessed with i wore it for like 10 years and then when the pandemic hit obviously i stopped going to the office and stopped therefore wearing perfume really very much I haven't really worn like a fragrance or a signature scent in a while but then i kind of saw this you know going viral so to speak and then i was in ulta i was going in there for some Thing one day I think for my kit and there was a huge display of this brand in the very front and I was like you know what I've actually really been wanting to like smell those and see what the hype is about I am a sweet smelling girl I don't like florals I don't like anything that's too heavy but I love things that smell super sweet the main notes in this are pistachio and salted caramel sign me up so I don't spray too much of it too much of anything gives me a little bit of a headache but what i do is i spray it in my hair and i spray it on my clothes so i'll do like a spray here a mist in my hair and then i'll spray it and just kind of walk through the mist and then i feel like it gives me a really nice scent without spraying it directly on my skin and without being overpowering but this is just such a beautiful warm delicious yummy smell and i wanted to mention it in this video so i should have mentioned this in the beauty section but i forgot so here we are <laughs> Thought we were ending it on a high note with the books, but we're ending it on a really high note with this body spray. So now we're really done. All right, you guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me. I have really been loving doing tutorials, but I also really love these videos where we just get to sit and chat. I really like to talk about things that I like, which is why I have this channel. And it's just really fun to be able to do that. So definitely let me know in the comments what you were loving in March, books you would recommend based on, you know, the little taste of my book taste that you've gotten here in this video. I will definitely include some more in my next month's favorites video but yeah let me know let me know what self tans you've been loving let me know what body sprays you've been loving let me know what makeup you've been loving let me know affordable high-end books what are you excited for for the summer 
Let me know all of it. I would love to chat with you guys. And if you have made it this far and you have not already subscribed to my channel, please hit that subscribe button down below so you don't miss any future uploads from me. You can also follow me on Instagram. I am in two places over there. So at Glam by Devin, D-E-B-Y-N, is going to be my makeup artist Instagram. So that is where you will see a lot of my client work. I treat that a lot like my online portfolio to attract bridal clients. So you'll see a lot of my client work over there. You will also see a little bit of me as well. And then at DevDevGregs is just my personal Instagram. I won't say there's a lot going on there, but that's where you can find me in between YouTube videos. But with that, I will catch you in my next one. Love you. Bye.